Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Irvine United Congregational Church, where we are an open and affirming just peace, global missions, creation justice, progressive Christian congregation of the United Church of Christ. Great. Here, we seek to be a diverse, multicultural, multi-generational community that creates intentional community as we come together to pursue justice, to love with kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. So thank you for joining us this morning. If you are a visitor, we're especially glad that you've joined us. Um, if you're watching online, thank you for tuning in. We'd love to get to know more about you. And you can help to share something about yourself by filling out a green card, which you'll find at the welcome table. Or if you are online, or it's just easier to go online, head to iucc.org slash visitor, peruse the site while you're there, and then share a little about yourself so we can reach out and intentionally welcome you to our community. If you are here in person and you have difficulty hearing everything, we do have some devices available. You can head to Donnie in the back and he will help you get set up with one of those at that tech booth back there. And we are a green faith church, so we no longer print paper bulletins, but you can use the QR codes that are available on the screens and you can download the bulletin that way. Otherwise, we will just lead you through the service. You can pay attention to what's happening on the screen or just follow everyone else and we'll take you through it. Today is Pledge Day. So we are going to be blessing our pledges a little bit later in the service in gratitude for your generosity and your commitment to care for this church as we live out Jesus' call to be Christ among us. Today we also have a special congregational meeting. It is immediately following this service. So we're going to ask our members just to stay inside after the service finishes. We do need to hit our quorum, but this is going to be a hybrid meeting, so you can Zoom in if needed. If you're watching online, get that Zoom link. If you're going to be here and you need to go on to Zoom, go back to the Friday e-blast, Grab the link, click it. You can watch on your phone. If you're at home, watch on your computer. But those of you who are here, just please don't leave. We expect this, <laughs> we expect this to be a quick meeting as we have only one agenda item. And this is to vote on the transfer of the title of our property. Right here, this property, 4915 Alton Parkway. And that transfer will come from the Southern California Nevada Conference of the United Church of Christ to us, the Irvine United Congregational Church. Now, you might have already thought that we, this was our church, because we talk all the time about how we're the ones who have to put everything together. We're the ones who have to pay the mortgage. So it only makes sense that we should be the ones who have the title. So this is in alignment with our polity, of congregational autonomy. So you know that from our stewardship season, it's up to all of us. The larger church doesn't actually give us money. Usually we give them money. So during our stewardship season, we are mindful that it is up to us to be stewards. And now the conference has recognized this and is gifting it back to us. There are some transfer fees, just title fees, but that's minimal. And we all think this is a very, very good thing. Those of you who have been around a while will remember that there was lots of hoops to jump through. There's always lots of hoops to jump through, and it made it more complicated. This will make everything simpler for us. So please stay. I do hope you'll vote yes, and we'll move that meeting along so the admin board can give you coffee and cookies following the meeting. And then after second service today, we have a Stephen Ministry Presents on Alzheimer's. And there'll be a conversation with Alzheimer's OC's Patty Mooton. I love her. She knows everything there is to know about Alzheimer's and dementia and caring and caregivers and all the things. So it's an excellent opportunity for anyone to learn more about Alzheimer's and to provide resources for those. The Stephen Ministry, of course, wants to be here to help you whatever your um, moment might be. But in this particular case, they want to present to you about the Alzheimer's um, disease and hope that you will join them. 
Then, next week, we have a very special service. We are hosting University Synagogue right here. Normally, our shared Thanksgiving service takes place in an evening, but University Synagogue had a scheduling conflict, so we are going to be hosting them right in the context of this service, so it makes it so easy for you, just come back next week, right here, same time, same place, but with a bunch of friends. Um, this is also Rabbi Arnie Rockless's final Thanksgiving service with us, and he's been there over 30 years, so it's a really special time for us to gather with him as we are celebrating Thanksgiving to give thanks for this long-standing relationship. We've got some special things planned, some special guests, so I hope that you will attend and um, celebrate as we give thanks together. Invite friends, family, it's a great time to get to know us as an interfaith community and the relationships that we've built. And then finally, I hope this is finally, it feels like it's not quite time to be talking about Advent. My daughter gets upset anytime anyone talks about Christmas before Thanksgiving. She's a purist. Yeah, yeah. She leans into the Puritan background of our congregationalist history. Um, we have many things planned, though, this Advent season, and I want you to get them on your calendar now. So the Advent workshop and snow day will be on December 2nd. That's a Saturday. Please invite friends, especially families. And then on December 3rd, we will celebrate the first Sunday of Advent right here. And that evening, our amazing choir will gift us with their annual concert, Sing Noel, at 7 p.m. So mark your calendars. Start planning. I know your calendars are probably already filled up for December. So get those on right now so that you don't forget to celebrate and worship with us here at IUCC. Lots more going on. Do check the website. We have an info table outside that can share more about what's happening. Uh, there are some QR codes. You'll find them in bookmarks in your hymnals. Um, and we would just hope that you will connect with us always on Sunday mornings, but perhaps making relationships in the community beyond worship because we recognize that church is more than just an hour on Sunday morning. It's about relationships. It's about being church together. And one of the ways that we are church is sharing in our love and our blessings. And today we have some prayer shawls to bless this morning. They are our mini shawls. And we are lifting up Cheryl Tribbiani and Sharon Lynn. Sharon is moving. Is this the words for me? I already got it. And we're also lifting up the family of Lindy Garber, who was a member here for many years, and she died just last week, and we want to send this to her family. So as often, we ask you to simply infuse this with your love and your prayer so that they can receive them and know that we are thinking of them, that we love them, and that we wrap them in our prayers and our love. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here today. I hope you experience the joy of community as the Christ among us come together to create church, to share in our love as we commit to service together. Welcome to IUCC. Wayne, can you gong? Oh, Molly, Molly. It's her birthday, Molly's birthday. Come, Molly. You're going to pass it to Molly here.
Good morning. My name is Cesar Sangalang, and I'll be your worship leader this morning. Will you please join me in our call to worship uh, following the digital program or the screens? We gather today to celebrate our gifts. We gather today to celebrate our community. We gather today to celebrate our past, present, and future. We celebrate the proud history of coming together, standing up, speaking out, creating community, thankful we have found like minds and hearts to work together in a manner that God gives them. A presence filled with Christ among us, leading us in love to make this world a better place. Come, let us gather and celebrate to shine our light and live God's love. Christ among us. Now let's uh, stand in body or in spirit as we sing together the hymn, The Fire of Commitment. This one's not in your hymnal. We sing it on the first um, day of stewardship and the words will be on the screen. Hey kids, we're back for another episode of Fresh Word. Now today is Pledge Sunday, the final day of our stewardship season in which we fundraise so that the church can keep doing the important work that it does in the community. 
Today's question is a fun one. If you had the money to do whatever you wanted for IUCC, what would you do? Um, I would give some money along the money to church so that we can go on fun field trips. To places such as like, like bowling or ice skating or skateboarding. I'll kill you. If I had any money in the world, I would help IUCC finish remodeling Palmer Hall. I would get us some fun murals, probably put in new furniture, and just make it really welcoming space. Not it's not already welcoming, but I would really update it and make sure it matches our kiddos and the needs that we have. I think that would be a space that could really use a lot of fun, and if I had them, that's where I'd put them. Those are all great ideas, and we can make all those things possible with everyone's support. And we need everyone's support to keep IUCC going. What would Irvine be without a progressive Christian presence? As followers of the way of Jesus, our church embraced those suffering from HIV and AIDS during the epidemic when friends and family abandoned them. In 1991, we formally became the first LGBTQ plus affirming church in Orange County. We fought Prop 22 in 2000 and Prop 8 in 2008 until same gender marriage became the law of the land. We boldly proclaim that people of all sexual orientations and gender identities are divinely created in God's image and loved by God. God, who is every color imaginable and unimaginable, created a rainbow of diversity because this diversity is what reflects the image of God. Which is why we, Irvine United Congregational Church, we followers of the way of Jesus Christ, stand up for and alongside our queer youth so that they can live into the fullness of their humanity and be all that they can be. Amen. IUCC is the place to be. And let's keep it that way for the next 44 years. Until next time, keep it fresh. time for Sunday school and the rest of us I won't ask you to stand as long as you promise to sing along to our stewardship theme to the tune of this little light of mine some of the words are the same
Good morning. Uh, most of you know me by now, but for those that don't, my name is Dwayne Vaggart, and I'm one of the two co-chairs for the Fund Development Committee here at IUCC. Uh, as you're aware now, this is our last Sunday of our month-long stewardship pledge campaign. On the first Sunday, you heard from my co-chair, Bill Lawrence, uh, where he explained what stewardship pledging is all about and how, how to go about doing it. He also introduced our theme for this pledge season of Christ Among Us. In the intervening weeks, you've heard from several of the Christ Among Us in our church, including the young, dynamic couple of Daniel Blackburn and Lauren Louie, who contribute so much uh, and have such an impact on this church with their leadership and volunteerism. You also heard from Felicity Figueroa, the epitome of charity and activism, not only in our church, but at our community in large. Hopefully, you've seen and watched several of the videos highlighting other Christ among us in our church, such as Pat Sauter, whose virtues were extolled by Pastor Craig uh, recently, uh, one of those um, videos that literally brought tears to my eyes, as did the one about Dustin just now, uh, was hearing about um, uh, Jaime Reza describing that when he first joined our choir, our prior choir member, Jim Hamilton, was one of the ones that made him feel most welcome and at home, and actually later paid for Jaime to attend an IUCC choir concert in Hawaii because Reza couldn't afford that on top of paying for another choir concert that he was attending that same year. Jim was truly an example of the Christ among us, giving of himself selflessly with no expectation of payback. Someone who has not adequately been identified as a Christ among us is our own Pastor Craig. As part of Stewardship Pledge Campaign, Pastor Craig early on inquired whether we were planning any videos for the campaign. Not being particularly creative and not very tech savvy, I replied that I didn't have any immediate plans for that, but I was open to any suggestions. The next thing I knew, all of these wonderful bi-weekly Christ Among Us videos have miraculously appeared, all having been organized and produced by him. I'm sure you'll agree with me that he is truly one of the Christ among us here at IUCC. Always taking initiative, always doing what's needed, and always doing it with love and joy. If you need convincing, I hope you watched this recent appeal for uh, members to join the Congressional Care Committee. That really did nearly bring tears to my eyes too. And those that do Congressional Care here at our church are truly Christ among us. As I mentioned on the first Sunday of the stewardship campaign, you heard from my co-chair Bill Lawrence as the opener. I guess you could say that today I'm the closer on the deal. <laughs> to that end, just so you know, all the doors have been locked until we get 100% <laughs> participation from the congregation. Actually, just kidding. But really, all kidding aside, I can't stress enough how important making a pledge for this coming year is to the overall health of our church. You've probably heard me describe that, just like most of you at home that have a budget, we have to do the same thing here at church. This past month, our treasurer Chuck Heath and our leadership have been developing a tentative budget. However, that process can't really be completed until we have some reasonable idea of what the income of the church will be in this coming year. That's where your pledges come in. On the first Sunday, I'm sure Bill and Connie showed you this pie chart that identified that 70% of our income here at the church is via pledges. We really need to have that percentage be higher. Um, so that we don't risk, again, having to approve a deficit budget as we come together this coming January to approve a final budget, which will be predicated upon the pledges that we have made then. Money from the CARES Act and the PPP that helped offset the deficit last year aren't going to be coming this year. And the monies uh, and our costs have risen, especially with regard to necessary salary increases 
and the fact that we have recently finally filled three vacant positions here at our church in the ministries of the youth program, of which you see the effect relative to Justin speaking at the Irvine um, uh, school board meeting. And as a consequence of that outreach, we have a, a visitor here actually today that brought her three young children as a consequence of seeing that video and realizing she needs to be at this church. So again, it underscores the importance of our youth program and our outreach. So hopefully you saw the financial report by our treasurer, Chuck Heath, in the online November newsletter as part of our increasing our transparency with the church and wanting to keep you abreast of where we are financially. Chuck basically summarized that we're close to a break even at this point. However, as cost of living adjustments and those new salaries kick in, this is going to strain our finances again. And again, we don't want to approve any more of a deficit budget than we need to, if at all, and certainly don't want to see our reserves diminished or have to use our available line of credit or have to cut back on any of our ministries. I know no one likes to, in the same way, no one likes to talk about death, no one likes to talk about money, and anyone just new to our church, it might seem that lately we've been doing a lot of that, and for that I apologize. However, I am a pragmatist, and it's always uncomfortable to ask people for money, but I'm going to do just that uh, in light of the fact that currently we're more than three quarters of the way through our um, stewardship pledge campaign, and at so far we have only reached 65% of our goal. We do truly need everyone's pledge. We're not asking anyone to put themselves in financial jeopardy over their pledging. However, we hope that every member of this church is able to make some pledge that they feel that they can reasonably satisfy throughout the coming year. A small pledge is better than no pledge at all, and certainly no pledge is too large. The income that comes from these pledges is what allows us to pay our bills, keep our doors open, and continue our beloved ministry, such as the music ministry and the youth program, among many others. And as you may have heard it said, prayers don't pay the bills. So there are pledge cards like this available in the narthex and at the information table outside. You can hand one of these either to myself, Pastor Craig, or Connie Jones, or easier still is to go on the IUCC website, iucc.org, click on donate, and at the top of the next page, there's a link to fill out the, the form. Um, with that, this concludes my role of playing the heavy closer today. Hopefully, Pastor Sarah's sermon will be lighter. And, by, and the doors are now unlocked. And I just want to thank you all for in advance for your pledges, and certainly thank you for those that have already pledged. So. Hi, church. I want to tell you about a Christ among us and how strongly I feel about Lauren Louie and how much I appreciate her, and I know you do too. A few years, years ago at a uh, ministries fair, I decided that I would seek out the um, ministry for young people because like other communities, Irvine has grown up and children go off to college or to work and parents become empty nesters and pretty soon grandparents and our NYP was shrinking. And so I wanted to see if I could help with that. And so I put my name down and Lauren has this group of glue that has helped us hang together as a group. She really has excellent communication skills. She loves every child and all of the people who are willing to help. And I know that she is appreciated by all of us. And I just wanted you to know that as you see the Sunday school grow and children among us, that Lauren is truly a Christ among us. Thank you. 
There are so many Christs among us here at IUCC. I already shared a couple of them, but I wanted to talk about Paul Fike, who is truly a Christ among us. I mean, he's even a carpenter, just like Jesus and his father. How much more Christ-like can you be? Paul gave so much of his time this past year here, day in and day out, early, early in the morning before the sun rose, and here, long after it set, working to ensure that our preschool could be refreshed and done right. And then, most recently, many of us know that he went and shared time with a friend who was suffering with Alzheimer's and was simply present with him, helping while his wife was hospitalized, truly doing God's work as a Christ among us all. We're so fortunate to have Paul and his wife Susie in our midst. Truly, Christ among us. Since I've been here, Myrna has just been so kind. She's made sure that Dustin, Jackie, and I always know what's going on. She takes such good care of all of our kiddos, and she's really just an example of what it is to be Christ-like and just to be very selfless and caring, and she really shows how to be church instead of just showing up for church. So we love you, Myrna. Hi everyone, it's Pastor Craig. This is my last chance to do a Christ Among Us video as we end stewardship. But this week I wanted to talk about our bookkeeper, Heidi Wilcox, who's on the other side of this divider here. Let's see if we can catch a glimpse of the rare, rarely spotted, one of a kind creature, Heidi Wilcox. disappearing quickly. She is so incredibly thoughtful, hardest working person. Of course, you know, not to mention all the number and bookkeeping and everything that she does for the church. That's the sweet things. It's the sweet things. Like this new little cushion seat that I got that makes my butt nice and soft now. Yes. And I've got this new floor pad down here because mine was all ripped up and breaking apart. And it's the sweet, delicious morsels that she brings in for me. It's the treats that she does for my dog. She's watching my dog over Thanksgiving while I go home because she lost her dog recently. And it's just the conversations. Every little moment in the office, working with Heidi, is so special. Anyway, what I want to talk about is the anthem that we are going to sing. Because it's called Ad Astra, which means to the stars. It is a translation of uh, Latin and was originally seen basically in the writings of Virgil. Also, by the way, I always like the note, but it's the state motto of Kansas. So anyway, we sing it with the idea that it's a dedication to the many Christs among us who, you know, really aspire to the new heights and help us find and continue success by reaching as high as possible and for the change and for the future for our church. We hope you find inspiration in our anthem. Thank you.
Please join me in the prayers of the church. Dear lover of all, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, we are in a season of remembering and thanksgiving. Last Sunday, All Saints Day, we remembered those no longer here who touched and shaped our lives and who still inspire us to live more fully into the reality of who we are, created in your image, being conformed by you to the character of your Son. Your servant Abraham, our President Lincoln, asked us to remember the better angels of our nature in the face of a looming civil war. He spoke with the soldiers who had fought in that war of having given the last full measure of devotion. What is the full measure of devotion that you require of us today amidst the conflicts and the opportunities of our time? Dear Lord, on this Veterans Day weekend, we remember the willingness of our veterans who offered themselves as the last full measure of service to our nation. They did so without knowing when they might be called upon to sacrifice, where that might occur, under what circumstances, dangers, or deprivation, and finally, for whose safety they might risk and even offer their life. Jesus said, greater love has no one than they lay down their life for another. In the Gospels of both Matthew and Luke, your son Jesus had an encounter with a Roman centurion, a military officer, who sought healing for his servant. What an interesting act for a Roman officer to come to what Rome believed was a sketchy, itinerant Jewish teacher to ask him to heal a servant. The soldier said he didn't need Jesus to come to his home, but to say the word, and he knew his servant would be healed. The officer explained that he knew about exercise and authority. Jesus then told the Jews, his own people, that he had not seen such faith in Israel. Holy Spirit, we pray each Sunday in our worship for you to come to us. And in that prayer, we're asking to be ready for what we might hear from you. In chapter 10 of the book of Acts, you came to another Roman centurion, one who was praying and most importantly, listening to you. This soldier felt called in a vision to invite the Apostle Peter into his home to share with his family and friends. Pretty scandalous. What would his superiors say? At the same time, Peter was called to respond in a vision of his own to let go of his baggage and reluctance to come into the home of a non-Jew, let alone one thought to be an enemy of his people. Once inside this centurion's house, Peter witnessed you, the Holy Spirit, coming to Gentiles in the same way you had come to Jews on Pentecost in the temple. The centurion was a model of what today we would call an edge walker, one who was moving along the border of two different belief systems. This Roman officer this soldier, like the one asking for the healing of his servant, was pioneering new relationships and community that included more diversity and more varied people than many could have imagined in that day or in ours as well. May we be such edge walkers, sensitive listeners to you and one another, and bold examples of love. 
central to what we honor in a veteran's heart and practice this weekend is the concept of meaningfully caring for others, of being connected in a diverse band of brothers, sisters, siblings. And yet, Father, and yet, Mother, we know there are many people living sacrificially, Christ among us. We pray today that we remember all those who are prayer warriors, advocates for social justice and peace, caregivers who tend to our young and our elders, teachers, health care workers, and frankly, people in any walk of life who wait upon you and serve all your people. Help us each to be counted more fully as among those people. We pray now for those for whom prayer has been requested this morning. Be with them as their names appear on our screens and in our hearts. Let us seal our prayers by praying together the prayer that Jesus taught us that would meet all our response abilities and our needs. Our Creator, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are grateful this morning for the many gifts, talents, and contributions which sustain our community. If your heart is suggesting a financial contribution, you may drop an offering in the plate this morning. You can visit our website at iucc.org forward slash giving. You can mail in a check at 4915 Alton Parkway, Irvine, California, 92604. You can also donate by texting. Simply text the amount you want to give to 949 776 3663 and follow the prompt. At this time, I'd like to invite our deacons to come forward to help with this offering.
We thank you for the generosity of these gifts. May we use them to further Jesus' ministry of inclusion, seeking justice, sharing joy, and living love. Amen. Today's scripture comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So yes, today is a pledge Sunday, which means that we finally get to stop talking about money soon, almost. Ugh, Dwayne is right, it is so uncomfortable. Nobody likes talking about money, especially in church. And it's really hard when we have visitors. We're so sorry. We don't always talk about this. It's not really who we are. But yes, yes, I know for the last four weeks we have been immersed in our stewardship season. And it certainly feels like all we talk about is money. But it's just one more day, I hope. Well, at least we're not as bad as public radio. You know what I mean? Doesn't it seem like they are always in the middle of their quarterly campaign? Thank God we got through the one in October. It was so long. I think it was longer than the other ones. It started before I had COVID. And then a week later, I crawled out of my cave and I got back in my car and it was still on. Every single show. Poor Larry Vantel is just trying to talk about the LA mayor, but no, he's got to get 45 more listeners to pledge before 11 a.m. My actual friend, Julia Paskin, you might know her, she does the weekends and she fills in on occasion. So she has to be the one to break into all the good weekend shows trying to hit her number. We've got 20 minutes to get 72 more pledges. We're not going to make it unless you pick up the phone right now and call. It is so stressful. If they don't hit their goal, then they don't get the extra money that hour, and it's just gone. Poof. And you know they need that $10,000 challenge because it's public radio, and nobody else is supporting them but us. Nine days straight program after program, challenge after challenge. I was actually thankful that I got COVID because I didn't have to get back in my car and listen to it every single day. But honestly, at a certain point, you're like, yes, yes, I will pledge. Please just give me back my wait, wait, don't tell me. <laughs> and yes, I do want that LAist mug, t-shirt or hoodie. I love the swag. But actually, I'm already a pledger. So, you know, I'm like feeling pretty good about myself. They already have me on a monthly poll. I have done my good deed. Nothing more for me to do than just sit this out. And while I'm sitting out waiting, I start to wonder, how can they do this multiple times a year? I mean, they already did it once. Who's left that still hasn't pledged? But then Larry says, if you call in to increase your pledge, that will count towards the challenge. Oh, so he needs 44 more pledges now, but if I call back and I increase, he's only gonna need 43 more, and then we are getting that much closer to get back to the conversation. So I was thinking, maybe you're like me. You're just so tired of all this money talk. But you know that we haven't hit our goal. And we still need like 49 more pledgers to get through this season. But hey, I'll settle for half of that. Say 25. 
here's the challenge, IUCC. If we can get 25 new or increased pledges in the next 20 minutes, <laughs> I will personally give an extra $1,000. Is that okay, Marquise? I know we pledged already an increase, but I've kind of got this thing going here. I'm kidding. We actually talked about this. We're all in. If you're all in, let's unlock that $1,000. And hey, if you pledge now, we will give you this amazing IUCC mug. I'm not even kidding. And if you give $50 a month or more during this challenge, it's only happening right now, folks, you will get this awesome IUCC t-shirt. You think I'm joking. So help me out. You've got to get me out of this uncomfortable situation. Pull out your phones. Go to iucc.org slash give or text. Do you have the number up here? I should have given it to you. Or text 949-776-3663. Or raise your hand and a deacon will bring you a pledge card right now. I think they're right next to Connie over there. You see them there? I'm not even kidding. A thousand dollars, guys. Oh, we got one. We got two. Okay. Craig is actually watching right now. Let's see if we can make the challenge. Okay. Now, back to our regular programming. Can you check on that thing for me over there? So I really do feel just like Larry Mantle. I'm trying to figure out how to get through this show or this sermon, talking about the pledge drive, yes, but also saying something meaningful as the clock ticks closer to the deadline that we're hoping to hit that goal. So the scripture this morning invites us to give with joy, emphasizing what we hear in Hebrews 13, 16. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. And Luke 6, 30, give to everyone who begs from you and from one who takes away your goods do not demand them back. Six of you. So, uh, give me a quarter. Oh, man. But just give me a quarter. Here in my hat. Come on, Jaime, it's as easy as that. Helping others brings you closer to God, so give me a quarter. I don't have any change. Hmm, okay. Give me a dollar. <laughs> give me a five. Are you kidding? <laughs> the more you give, the more you get. That's being alive. All I'm asking you is to do what Jesus Christ would do. He'd give me a quarter. Why don't you? All right, all right, here you go. Thanks. Take care. Whoa. What's the matter? I feel generous, compassionate, even. You do? Yeah. I feel like a new person, a good person. Helping other people out makes you feel fantastic. That's what I was trying to tell you. All this time, I'm running around thinking about me, me, me. And where has it gotten me? I'm going to do something for someone else. Me? No, IUCC. I'm going <laughs> to pay the money for IUCC. Give me your money. What? 
I need it for sure. I need it to eat. Come on, Joy. Oh, get lost. It'll make you feel great. So would a veggie burger. When our dreams come true, it'll all be partly thanks to you. So give me your money. I'd like to, but I can't. Give me your money. I'd like to, but I'm a student. Give me your money. I can't, I can't, I need it, I'm a student, I can't, I need it, I'm a student, I can't, I need it, I'm a student. <laughs> All right, here you go. Suddenly, I am feeling closer to God. It's time to stop begging, it's time to start living. What can I give to God? That's the spirit. When you help others, you can't help helping yourself. When you help others, you can't help helping yourself. Ooh. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, everyone. And you know what? I think it's time to pass my hat. All right, I'm gonna start over here. It's for the church, everybody. <laughs> All right. Give us your money that you've got. Just fork it on over. The sanctuary will get hot. It's time to lift the hat. And there's nothing you can do about that. So give us your money. Give us your money. Give us your money. When you help others, you can't help helping yourself. When you help others, you can't help helping yourself. Every time you do good deeds, you're also serving your own needs. When you help others, you're really to give us your money, but we are in the middle of a challenge. How are we doing, Craig? Two online, Two online pledges. I've seen hands raise up, but we're going to need to do better than that. By the way, ooh, that's great. She's matched my match. By, but we still need to get that in order to get mine. You've got to hit that challenge. So, by the way, that's from Avenue Q, and many of you went to Craig's show this summer when his theater company put it on, so it felt kind of timely in some way. Now, of course, this is hyperbolic. It's all tongue-in-cheek, or it's like more than tongue-in-cheek. It's over the top. But I love that refrain. When you help others, you can't help helping yourself. And that's what happens to the characters when they all start giving of themselves and they feel that remarkable, transformational experience the moment they do. That feeling, they capture it so well, the high of giving, it's real. A 2008 study looked at happiness, money, and giving. Subjects were asked to rate their happiness and given an envelope containing either $5 or $20, and the participants were randomly assigned to either spend the money on themselves or someone else by the end of the day. Those who spent the money on someone else reported happier moods than those who spent the money on themselves. A separate group was asked to predict outcomes of the experiment, and most believed that those who spent money on themselves would be happier. Not only were they wrong, they were significantly wrong. The research suggests that 
thinking about money may propel individuals forward toward, or, sorry, toward using their financial resources to benefit themselves, but spending money on others can provide a more effective route to increasing one's own happiness. Interesting. Because we think that if we spend the money on ourselves or if we save it up, we'll be happier. You know that parable when Jesus tells the man who builds a bigger barn to store all his grains and he says to himself, once I can do this, I can finally relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But of course, in the parable, it doesn't work out that way because God ends up demanding his life and asks basically, what good has it done you to store up all of this? And in the parable's case, it's nothing, no good. Rather, it's kind of just like what happens in Avenue Q and our little skit here. It is giving that makes us happier. Giving leads to an increase of personal happiness. So it's not just giving to help the receiver, to help them feel better or us survive next year. It's giving to make ourselves feel better. Studies have shown that when an individual's basic needs are met, the amount of income as it relates to our happiness is weak. In his 2008 book, Gross National Happiness, best-selling author Arthur C. Brooks says, research reveals that if you were to increase your wealth with about $100,000, you would increase your happiness level by two percentage points. This suggests that other strategies, such as working on your spiritual or family life or volunteering, being part of a faithful community, might be more cost effective than simply striving for more money, he writes. I think this is really important because what we do need our members to give. It is up to each of us to support this church. It's like public radio. If we don't give, it won't exist. And we want this place to exist. We want this for ourselves because this community matters to us, but for other people. Remember my spooky Sunday sermon for those of you who are here? A nightmare on Alton Street? Parkway? <laughs> there would be a real loss if IUCC didn't exist. But perhaps just as important as giving to ensure our church continues to exist, is what giving can do for us as individuals. I think a big reason that people come to church, at least initially, is to feel better, right? You know, we often come because we're missing something in our lives and we want to feel better about ourselves, about our world, to lament our powerlessness and find a sense of power. So very simply, if we're solely focused on our self-improvement, we've come here because we're looking for something to feel better, an effective way to feel better about ourselves and happy in our life is to cultivate a heart for giving. And that's what we're doing here. Cultivating hearts for giving. And it'll make us happier people. It really doesn't have to be here, songs and challenges aside. Of course, as members, we are charged with this responsibility to keep this church going. But being a generous person, a giving person, will make your life happier. And hopefully, it will also make a difference in our world. So give somewhere. Because when you help others, you can't help helping yourself. Amen. Okay. Well, now we're going to bless the pledges. So, uh, Craig, where's Craig? How do we do? Do we get 25 pledges, though? It's not matching the, it's not matching the $1,000. The challenge only is unlocked when we get 25 new or increased pledges. Increase counts, just like Larry Mantle says. There's one. Okay, we'll keep working on it. You know what? I will extend this challenge to second service. But I'm going to need you all to help us get there. 
Otherwise, Marquis got $1,000, like, just poof, back in his pocket. <laughs> so what happens? You're, like, sitting there listening to the radio. Oh, God, Larry, please get it, because that's going to just disappear. We don't want it to disappear. Okay, well, we'll find those numbers out. We do have mugs for you. They're literally sitting right next to Dwayne right now. If you pledge today or you increased your pledge, come over and get your IUCC mug. So thank you. Thank you for making, go get it. That's right. Go, 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 go. Good job. We want to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you, everyone, for making your pledge. Thank you for making your commitment to this church. Thank you for living as Christ among us as we join together to be the body of Christ here in this space and in this community. So now we're going to ask a blessing upon the pledges. These are upon these pledges and the pledges that we've made over the last four weeks together. May we never take for granted the gifts that we have been given recognizing that it takes a community of committed individuals to be church and to do church together. May these pledges continue to further Jesus' ministry of inclusion for all. And may our community continue to be a blessing to one another, to our city, to our county, our state, our country, and beyond in this world. As we follow Jesus in seeking justice and loving kindness and walking humbly together. Amen. And so, remember, don't leave after I finish this. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, go out into a world that always tells us that we need more, more, more for ourselves. And let us open our hearts to a life of happiness as we give generously, as Christ would do, for we are the Christ among us. Amen. How are we on our quorum? Right. <laughs> Did I offend you or was I funny? Not at all. Okay, good. <laughs> Is it? And you owe me a t-shirt and a cup. All right. God bless you. Thank you.